You have had your tea, the doings of Hamish and Dougal. Today, Inveruri Jones and the Thimble of Doom. Let me in, let me in. Who's there? Brad Bloody Pitt. Who do you think it is? Oh, we're not at home to Mrs. Strott. Oh. <laughs> Open this door. No, it's pouring down with rain out there. Oh, is it? I hadn't noticed. Oh, is that Mrs. Sarcastic with you, Mrs. Strong? <laughs> Let me in. Oh, at last. Oh, it's you. You'll have had your tea. I'm in no mood for tea. I'm drenched. Look at the state of the sporran. Oh, so that's what it is. Oh, <laughs> See how it shrunk. And there's... <laughs> and there's me thinking you are being molested by a wee guinea pig. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> what? My God, there is a wee guinea pig <laughs> peeping out of my sporran. Well, he'll have been sheltering from the rain. Now, uh... No, oh, get out of that wet kilt and hang it over my statue of Malcolm Rifkin. <laughs> no, no, not that one. The full-size one. Oh, that's better. Well, that's a matter of opinion. Uh, oh, is that an oilskin thong? Well, I thought it might rain. Oh, uh, come away over here by the fire while I get the whiskey bottle and hide it. <laughs> I've brought you tea, tray and... Oh! 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 Careful, Mrs. Nochte. <laughs> it uh, seems you were as surprised as I was to see Brad Pitt here. Oh. <laughs> no, it's me, Hamish. So that's where my oilskin thong got to. <laughs> All right, here you are. Have it back. No! Oh, just a minute. Where's Mr. Dougal gone? Oh, he must have popped out. Oh, no, not the both of you. Oh. <laughs> Haven't you got something you ought to be doing, Mrs. N? Ah, uh, thanks for reminding me. I ought to be giving you your matching orders. But I can't go out looking like this. Here we are. Here we are. I found my old spare pair of flared trues, my chunky iron sweater, and a tartan bonnet. Now, Hamish, what are you going to wear? Oh. <laughs> well, come on, Hamish, let's hit the town. Oh, I'm fed up. There's never anything to do here on a wet afternoon. When does the pub open? Tuesday. Oh. <laughs> you mean they've got an extension? Aye. But it doesn't help us today. We'll just have to stay here, huddled in the doorway of the Museum of the Glen. Why don't we do what other people do to while away a wet afternoon? We tried that, but you were sick and my hat blew off. <laughs> I'm not talking about sailing. <laughs> Neither was I. Uh, but it's right behind us, staring us in the face. The museum. Oh, of course. Let's go in. Hmm. Hmm. That's an interesting collection of empty shelves along that wall. Oh, yes, and there's, there's some more empty shelves over here. Oh, indeed, yeah, it's quite different, but just as interesting. Yes. Shouldn't there be something on those shelves and in those cases? Oh, such as what? Well, wine gums and Snickers and Twix. Snickers and Twix, Snickers and Twix. Don't get your Snickers in a Twix. This is... <laughs> This is not a sweetie shop. This is a museum. In a museum, the shelves and cases are full of exhibits. This means the Museum of the Glen has been looted. 
Hello, you two. Oh, your lordship. Dougal. Your lordliness, something awful has occurred. Oh, no, not on the same day the Museum of the Glen has been looted. What could be worse than that? <laughs> oh, you've rather taken the wind out of my sails there. <laughs> uh, your lordship. What is it, Brad? Has, uh... <laughs> Has everything been taken? I'm afraid it has, Brad. Oh, no, no. Does that include the museum's most famous exhibit? Yes. The Thimble of Doom. What the hell is the Thimble of Doom? Ah, it's a mysterious ancient thimble. It was first discovered in the Great Pyramid of Cheops. The display in Tam the Butcher's window? <laughs> yes. How it came to be there is a mystery. But there are those who say the thimble bestows upon whoever wears it unholy powers. And now it's been stolen. Who could have done this terrible thing? Oh, look. Look what's been huddled through the window. It's Mrs. Nochty with a message attached. <laughs> Forgive the intrusion, but a gentleman gave me this message for you and then threw me through the window. Wait. Look at what this message says. I have the legendary Thimble of Doom. I intend to use its ancient mystical powers to crush Scotland under the heel of my own brutal dictatorship. Hoping this finds you as it leaves me, all the best, yours, Inverurie Jones. I might have known it. The unscrupulous treasure hunter Inverurie Jones has stolen the legendary Thimble of Doom and made off with it. We must track him down. Oh, I have a biplane with its engine idling parked right outside in the high street. <laughs> What are you doing with a biplane out there? Well, Monday is my day for crop dusting. I didn't know you went in for crop dusting. Oh, your lordship, hadn't you noticed how bright and shiny your plums are? <laughs> Duty-free shortbread. Presentation haggis. Packet of three. Peanuts, that is. A large glass of whiskey for Hamish. Sounds like a fair swap. <laughs> Cheers. Stewardess? Yes, sir. Could you be a dear and ask the pilot who's flying this thing? Oh, I knew there was something. Excuse me. Pilot coming through. It's all right, Mrs. Nochty. I've got the controls. Mr. Hamish, I didn't know you could fly a plane. Oh, I knew there was something. Well, here we all are in the rainforest. <laughs> this is exactly the sort of place where Inverurie Jones would be hiding. Right, everybody spread out. Oh, 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 no, no. What I had in mind was an extensive search of the entire rainforest. Right. You three go over there, and I'll search right here. Very well, your ladyship. Consider this rainforest well and truly searched. Oh, Dougal, we've got to stop for a bit. I, I have to powder my nose in the smallest room in the rainforest. And while I'm in there, I might as well have a pee. <laughs> well, be quick about it. In the meantime, I'll rub my legs together and start a fire. <laughs> Can you start a fire by rubbing your legs together? Oh, no, I've got a box of matches for that. <laughs> Listen! Listen, the drums, the rhythm of the drums. Let's get moving. Oh, this is no time for dancing. <laughs> Listen. What's that? Oh, it's just as I feared. It's the masked pipes and drums of the McCoists, the lost clan of the rainforest. The clan McCoist? Hey. Is it true that they're New Age cannibals? That's right, they only eat vegetarians. <laughs> They're getting closer. We'd better run for it. The band might be taking a collection. No, I'm going to stay here and stick it out. <laughs> well, that scared them off. Maybe, but they've 
left their knitting behind. Their knitting? Oh, yes, they're superstitious folk. They knit gigantic cardigans for the spirits of the forest. Ah, that would explain those enormous knitting needles lining the path. And also that giant ball of wool at the top of the hill. James, that's a big ball of wool. <laughs> Let's just hope nothing happens to dislodge it. Uh, well, I can think of better times for a volcano to erupt. The enormous ball of wool has been dislodged and it's rolling down the hill towards us. Run for your lives! Oh, it's caning on us. Quick, let's hide in this cave. No, it's full of snakes. Quick, let's hide in this cave. No, it's full of spiders. Quick, let's hide in this Starbucks. No, it's full of wankers. (laughs) 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 Two skinny frappuccinos and a latte. Do you mind? There is a cue. Your Your lordship. Lord, I I thought you'd all died in the wool. No. No, no, we were lucky to get out alive, and... In fact, now I think of it, you left us all in the rainforest to perish. So what? You can't stop me now, because I have the thimble of doom. I slip the thimble on, and... Where's he gone? I can't see him. I'm still over here. Oh, so you are. (laughs) So, now you plan to use the power of the thimble to take over Scotland, eh? No, unfortunately it won't do that. But it does mean that I can now darn socks without fear of a needle-related injury. Hooray! You fiend! But I can't believe that you've done all this to us. You are kindly laid. You poor fools. I am Inverurie Jones. Inverurie Jones? Then you must pay for your crime. Oh, there's a perfectly innocent explanation. Here, I've written it all down on this Kleenex. Yeah, this is a tissue of lies. <laughs> More to the point, what have you done with the real lad? Hello, everyone. Your lordship. Dougal, Mrs. Noctian. I say, Brad Pitt's let himself go. And... <laughs> Good Lord, my spitting image. You must have a doppelganger. No, just a cappuccino for me. (laughs) So, you must be the notorious Enverurie Jones. I beg to differ. How do we know you're not Enverurie Jones? How can we tell which is which? There's only one surefire way to tell the real lad from the imposter. Ask him to sing. Oh, steady on. (laughs) Steady on, steady on, Mrs. Nochty. There's only so much flesh and blood can stand. (laughs) But she's right. Nobody sings like the lad. Very well, I'm game. After you, Inverurie. No, after you, Inverurie. No, I insist. So do I. Very well, even though even I have lost track of who I am now. (laughs) Here we go. Ahem. Well, that sorted that out. Yeah. Aye, it's good to have you back with us, your lordship. It's good to be back. <laughs> you have had your tea. The doings of Hamish and Dougal was written and performed by Barry Cryer and Graham Garden, with Alison Steadman as Mrs. Nocty and Jeremy Hardy as the Laird. Music was arranged by John Garden and performed by Pete Rosser, Kylie Davies, Ross Stephen, and Sean Randall. The producer was John Naismith.